Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. My name is Joseph Ryan Banks, and I have a lot of thoughts that have been on my mind lately, a lot of concerns. This video may not be very long, but it is important, I promise. I'm sorry if it's a little scatterbrained, but this is just how I write essays now, so this is how it's going to be. Call me the next Kurt Vonnegut, or whatever. So, does anybody else get stuck in artist development hell? Like really bad artist block? I feel like I'm just taking shots in the dark, throwing whatever at the wall and nothing seems to stick. Navigating the YouTube creator landscape can be very daunting, and it has been a great source of anxiety for myself. I started playing horror games, RPGs, simulations, and adventure games on a separate Let's Play channel as a counterbalance to my channel that has my political videos and essays about film and literature. It was honestly becoming too much for my brain to handle seeing the decayed bodies of children being pulled from the rubble of Gaza, while our political leaders continued to boldface lie to the general public when we all know nobody with a single ounce of critical thinking skills is believing this nonsense. The people who believe everything the government tells them are already entrenched in their beliefs and carry very bigoted, hateful views on races unlike their own. I wanted to take a break from that, but I know now that it's not possible to break away from the greater whole of humanity like that, like what the American government and the economy would like me to do. What they believe I ought to do is sit down, shut up, keep working my passive little position and get yelled at by my boss and go home and feel exhausted and get back up the next morning and do it all over again. Does it even make sense to have anything on YouTube connected to anything else that I do at all? I have many different passions and desires I feel that would cater to very different audiences. And YouTube is all about cultivating your audience, the niche thing you do and the specific tastes that it gives everyone. I feel lost and frustrated and confused about it all. I made a channel with my best friends, who sadly moved away several months ago, called Close Good Friends, where we tried to play games together and do the comedy thing, like the Game Grumps, or Oni Plays, or any of the other successful Let's Play channels with multiple people and craziness involved. I have a backlog of all we recorded and I feel awful for it. I have all this stuff we filmed and I never edited or published it, and it's like, we did all that for what? I still want to edit it and put it together and make something out of it, but my emotional resources are so worn threadbare that I honestly don't know where to start with any of this. I also want to make a game. I want to play games. I want to talk about art and not confine myself to just one form or one type of art to talk about. I want to discuss games and films and books and current events and whatever else seems to pop up for me in my mind. Google's experimental AI answered my question when I went to ask, is it better to have separate YouTube channels for different interests? And it said having separate YouTube channels for different interests can have several benefits improved viewer experience. Tailoring content to a specific audience can make for a better viewing experience, and may reduce confusion and disengagement. If someone is a fitness YouTuber, for example, they could have separate channels for yoga and weightlifting. Since these things are related, but do not on the whole cross over with each other, hence a different audience for each one. It's a good way of keeping the waters clear. So maybe perhaps my Let's Play channel could just stay a Let's Play channel. The Media Analysis channel can stay Media Analysis politics? Where does that come in? That can be part of media analysis too, I guess, because there's a lot of overlap with that sort of thing in the bigger channels like Big Joel as an inspiration, for example. It's recommended when having multiple channels to use them for experimentation. See what topics do well. Similar videos lead to more views and more subscribers, and you can cross-promote channels on every single video that you have. This means that you can slowly inch your way into having a cultivated empire of content for each particular niche your audience cares about. The horror game community may not give as much of a care about politics, or media analysis, or game development, and so on. Needing to know your audience is critical to guiding the development of your channels, and having a shotgun approach may be the best way to do it. Shotgunning onto multiple different channels to see what sticks, which will tell you what is more productive to focus on in the long run. A game dev channel is only game dev. A let's play channel is only let's plays. A video essay channel is only video essays, you see what I'm saying? At least I hope you do, because I'm struggling to know exactly what I'm doing here in the first place. Obviously, it's confusing. A person who consumes video essays about movies may not care about politics, so it's possible that I'm knocking myself down before I can even get the ball rolling by combining those things in the first place. I want to hear what you think. I want to know what my audience cares about and what they like about what I do. I don't know what I'm doing, and I want to get closer to that nugget of truth that will help guide me down the path of success rather than be left in total darkness and constantly guessing what my next move will be. It is stressful and unproductive to sit and contemplate and never actually produce anything worthy of attention or praise. 
I struggle with ADHD, and I believe that I may possibly be on the spectrum, at least some Asperger's, who knows. But getting an autism diagnosis is long and difficult and expensive, and they have to literally image your brain to see its physical structure before they can know for sure. So I'm just guessing at this point. I have a lot of niche interests myself, and I also get tired and exhausted from consuming one thing too much for too long. I crave variety, yet I also need stability. God bless my fiance for putting up with my craziness and supporting me while I'm going through a particularly hard transition in my life. I have a heart condition that has landed me thousands of dollars in medical debt, over $5,000 from just a single ER visit, where they could not give me anything except an anti-acid and some Ativan to help me calm down from my panic attack. I was sure the new medicine my previous heart doctor was giving me was actually killing me, or at least making things harder for me, but I have noticed some benefits from the upped dose of diltiazem to 120 milligrams twice a day instead of just once. I had been taking that for the past six years, and only just recently has it gotten worse. For some reason, I was under the impression that I was taking an extended release form of the medication, but I was getting the immediate release all of these years. I have anxiety, and a panic disorder, and combined ADHD and possibly OCD. My sister just recently found out she has OCD, and my dad definitely has it. So it's probably related to the maximum level of anxiety I feel on a regular basis, but who really knows? I may be driving myself crazy with worry about all these things, but what the fuck, man? The society is sick when we have exterminations and genocides being carried out by the largest, most evil empire to ever exist, the United States, in case any of you were actually wondering about that. And all I can do is sit and exclaim to the world that these are literal women, men, and children being slaughtered for the sake of profits for the colonial settler terrorists of Israel, as well as Lockheed Martin, IBM, Google, and a plethora of other corporations that are making record profits from the wars the United States supports and wages on its own. The US government decides who gets to live, who gets to die, who shares what information, how that information travels, what details get changed, and so on. It's a cyberpunk dystopia, and I can't not call it out for what it is at this point, and it makes me sick. It makes me absolutely sick to my stomach. And here I am, wondering if I should make another YouTube channel for just my game dev journey, because capitalism has put me into this horrifying mindset of growth at all costs. What can I do to grow? What can I do to increase profits for myself? Capitalism has put us all in a place of survival first, but not like the running from the cheetah type of survival. Like, how am I going to pay rent that is several times more expensive than what I make in a single month kind of survival? How am I going to survive without having to rely on my parents because they were marginally more successful and were able to benefit from the baby boom and whatever Gen X had going on for them? I'm speaking to a particularly American experience, but I'm sure that the generational problems are more universal in the larger industrial Western world than anywhere else, even when we live in relative comfort compared to the rest of the world. The survival mechanisms in place in an industrialized, developed first world country are designed to keep us all stuck in menial tasks that are completely divorced from our wishes and desires and deepest wants. We are alienated. What one truly wants to do with their life is barred away from them because of the arbitrary needs of the market. The socio-economic hurdles set in place by those that are in power, who are made up of different classes with different class interests than you. They want to maintain the hierarchy they constructed racially, economically, etc. And I am still here, feeling like I'm spinning my wheels at square one, barely making a dent in the oversaturated content creator, video essayist, let's player, game developer, gurgling YouTube pit of doom and death and destruction. The ennui is setting in, and it is violently sad to witness myself like this. I feel like I'm going nuts, like cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And you all know that commercial, because we have a shared language of products and consumerism to piggyback off of instead of creating a new novel culture informed by our cooperation and communal living. We are further pushed into self-isolating, paradoxically sharing more and more memes that we all relate to on deep levels of depression most young people feel at this point in history. I'm thinking about a lot of things. One could say that my mind is probably racing. It could be from the anxiety or the anxiety medicine, or it could be the sick society that is fundamentally anti-human and pushes for alienation of labor at a baseline. But I'm trying to break away from that, break through the barrier. I want my labor to mean something. I want to create art and music and videos and commentaries and have it all truly fucking mean something in the long run. Or in the short run. I want it to be meaningful now. I don't know whether I'm going to live or die tomorrow. Every day can be a new struggle or it can be a new opportunity. And I have to keep my mind and body in a state of positivity, in a state of care and love that I know is possible. If you guys like what I do and want to be part of the conversation, please let me know in the comments what you think. I have a coffee, PayPal, Venmo, uh, anything else for you guys who want to help me out. Links will be in the description. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.